So, you might see a circuit for a receiver, transmitter or transceiver that you wish to build. Maybe on the web or in a magazine. The only thing is that you want it on a different band to what the designer intended. Is it possible to change it to your band? The answer is usually yes. In this video, I'll discuss the things you need to think about whenever you need to change the operating band of a circuit up or down. The first thing you do is read the text and study the circuit diagram and try and orient yourself to it. That means identifying your power and ground connections. There are several parts of a circuit that you may need to change the components of to change it from one band to another. They may be crystals, inductors or capacitors. The crystals may be by themselves in an oscillator circuit or teamed up with other crystals in a filter circuit. Inductors and capacitors are normally teamed up with each other to form various RF filter configurations. An example is this parallel tuned circuit. You might see something like this if you're looking at a circuit diagram for the front end of a receiver. That provides some selectivity and rejects unwanted signals. Or in a transmitter, you might have another type of tuned circuit or filter and that is a low pass filter and its purpose is to pass signals below a particular frequency and reject those above. Okay so we have a parallel tuned circuit such as what we might have on the input of a receiver. Let's say the, let's say the circuit that we are borrowing from is a 7 megahertz receiver. Now the capacitor value here is 100 picofarad and the inductance value is 4.7 microhenry. That will resonate on 7 megahertz. There's some online calculators and you can punch in those values 100 picofarad, 4.7 microhenry and you'll get a resonant frequency near 7 megahertz. Now, what if we wanted to change it to another band, either above or below in frequency? Let's say 3.5 megahertz. In this case, we need to double the capacitor's value and also double the inductor value to decrease the resonant frequency, increase the capacitor and increase the coil value. That means adding more turns. And if we wanted a higher frequency band, like 14 megahertz, in this case we halve the value, 50 picofarad and 2.2 microhenry. Now these values are only approximate. There may be some stray capacitance, there might be the effect of other components in the circuit. So for sensitive cases such as a narrow bandpass filter in the front end of a receiver, you need to provide a means of making some adjustments to get things spot on. And for that, you might want to put in a trimmer capacitor, or you might want to try and make the inductor slightly variable in inductance. In the old days, they did that by having slugs that screwed into a former, and you had a and you screwed them in and out and uh, that varied the inductance or these days more coils around on toids and if you want to increase the inductance then you compress the turns together and if you want to decrease the inductance then you spread them out. Now here's our Pi filter, a low pass filter for RF RF going in there from the transmitter final amplifier. Here's your antenna socket, or it might be a transmit receive relay. Now, on 7 megahertz, that might be 1 microhenry, 1 microhenry, 400 picofarad, 800 picofarad, 400 picofarad. Now, if you were to use that circuit on a transmitter that we've modified for 14 meg, then your output power will be very limited. It will be much lower than what it was on 7 meg because this filter is a low pass filter and it cuts off signals 
above, let's say, 8 megahertz. So at 14 megahertz, your output will be much lower. Therefore, to get full output from a circuit that you're converting, you need to make sure that the low pass filter is also okay. And for 3.5 megahertz, in this case, you will still get full output, maybe even a bit more, but the output may be dirty. It will still have harmonics because the filter won't have fully suppressed it. So again, it's important to make sure the filter values are appropriate for your transmitting frequency. In the case of 80 meters, as with the parallel tune circuit, then you double those inductance values, double the capacitor values, and on 14 meg, you halve the inductor values and halve the capacitor values. Sometimes in circuits, you might see something that you might first think is dependent on frequency, but turns out not to be. For instance, this is a broadband transformer. It might be two or three pieces of wire twisted together and wound on a ferrite toroid. Or you might be looking at a QRP transmitter design and see a very simple output stage like this. There's no capacitor to resonate with this output coil, and in fact it's just a uh, RF choke, 10 to 100 microhenry, something like that. That's broadband, you probably won't need to change it. You might have capacitors in various parts of the circuit, and again, unless you're making big excursions in frequency, you can probably leave those alone. Even if you've changed all the frequency determining parts of a circuit, it's no guarantee that the receiver, transmitter or transceiver will work without further probing and changing components. Because the characteristics of some components, particularly transistors, varies with frequency. Some transistors may be okay for 3.5 or 7 MHz, but they run out of juice at 14 MHz or higher. So you may need to put in a completely different transistor if you were going to make the circuit operate at a higher frequency. The gain of stages also varies. At higher frequencies, the gain of stages drops off and at lower frequencies, it goes up. So if you're converting a circuit from say 7 to 28 megahertz, that's quite a big frequency shift. You'll probably need to add some extra gain somewhere and that goes for either a receiver or transmitter. It's much easier to convert to a lower frequency from say 7 to 3.5 megahertz as the gain of stages will go up and in the case of a receiver you'll need less gain anyway. However there are some traps to young players. With higher gain you may have problems with oscillating in power amplifier stages. There's a few things you can do to tame that. You might need to alter the bias you might need to put some resistors in the emitter circuit. You might need to add some ferrite beads to the base of a transistor to stop itself oscillating. Or you might need to improve some decoupling by putting even more capacitors between the supply rail and the ground. So changing projects to a different band is not necessarily straightforward, especially if it's a large frequency excursion. And if you're going up in frequency, you may find you need to add extra stages. Well, that ends part one. In summary, study the circuit, identify frequency determining parts, and note other component characteristics that may influence the performance of your circuit. Watch the next video for part two, where we'll get into more detailed circuits like regenerative and direct conversion receivers, and also a simple transmitter.